Simon, you're Director of Research at Cure Parkinson's. Can you tell me a bit about your personal journey and how you got involved in Parkinson's? So I am originally from New Zealand and um, in New Zealand, I was working for a small biotech company that was called Neurons. We thought we were very cute because we had NZ on the end. The people across the road at the medical school called us morons with an NZ on the end. But um, at the biotech company, we were developing drugs for neurodegenerative conditions, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, et cetera. Of all of these conditions, Parkinson's struck me as the most solvable problem. We had a very specific population of cells that were affected in the, in the dopamine neurons. And surely this would be a pretty easy problem to solve. 20 something years later, I am a little less naive and I think our knowledge of the condition has expanded beyond just the dopamine neurons. In addition, we've had a really exciting period of research and development in terms of the genetics and the associated biology of Parkinson's. And that's given rise to a series of clinical trials now that is really targeting the biology of the condition. And in the next few years, we'll certainly be getting a lot of data in terms of whether our theories about the condition are, are right or not. So on the side, you've set up this great website called Science of Parkinson's. Um, can you talk about what that website does and how it came about? Yeah, so the Science of Parkinson's is just trying to explain some of the research that's going on at the moment in, in plain English that my mother could understand. And it started, I was working as a postdoc at Cambridge University with Professor Roger Barker, and I was playing around with a bit of science communication, but it wasn't until one day a young chap named um, Martin Taylor came walking into the clinic and he has young onset Parkinson's. He was really thirsty for any information with regards to the research on Parkinson's. I realized that there was a missing, a big sort of gap, a big abyss between the Parkinson's community and the research world. The charities do a great job of expanding on what you see in the headlines, but uh, there's a, um, a niche there for someone, a researcher, to come along and actually expand on um, press summaries and provide an explanation as to what this particular bit of biology might mean or what it could mean in terms of um, th drug therapies, etc. Um, some people collect stamps, some people like watching football. I like writing about science. So that probably answers my next question, which is it's a, it's a really good website. There's a ton of information on there. But how do you find the time? Is, is it because you're just really interested in it and you work on it late in the evenings and stuff like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a night owl and um, I find myself around 10 o'clock at night thinking I'll just have a little look, see what's going on. And the next thing you know, it's two o'clock in the morning and you're banging away at some topic of uh, biology. I guess with the internet, there's obviously a lot of amazing resources, but is there a risk of misinformation as well? Do you ever come across that? And if so, what can we do about that? Yeah, so this was one of concerns with regards to um, the initiation of the whole website was the lack of solid information on the internet in terms of some of the therapies that are coming through. There's a lot of speculative stuff in the for some of the chat forums. You have to question where people are getting their information from if they're not citing the source. So a big part of the website is sourcing everything so that people can go and verify for themselves. Uh, and also just managing expectations for example, the Parkinson's community is very excited about stem cells for cell transplantation. There's still um, a lot of work to be done in terms of that area, simply because it's still um, very early in, in the clinical developments. Despite that, there are a lot of companies out there selling stem cell products to the Parkinson's community that have not been tested or verified, and they just have testimonials to, to accredit them. And you have to wonder where those testimonials come from. So you mentioned stem cells. So something I observe is there seems to be kind of fashions in, in um, Parkinson's research. So we talk about stem cells. We talk about um, uh, autophagy as a potential thing that everyone sort of chases and starts to look at. And then we talk about it. maybe it's an autoimmune disease or whatever. Do you observe this kind of fashion and everyone chasing the ball, if you like? Yes, but it's a very human condition, I think. You see herd mentality and researchers and they're chasing after trends. You see it in the Parkinson's community, the affected community that is. I think I think it's a very natural aspect of being human, but um, it's also useful for people when they do read something that sounds exciting to have a place they can go to and get a reality check or a verification of the actual data. That's one of the things your website helps to do is sort of look objectively across all of these different things, I guess. So in terms of science communication, in 30 seconds, how would you explain what is Parkinson's and what's going on in the brain? Parkinson's is a series of conditions that have a very similar appearance. Each individual probably has a different factor driving their Parkinson's. 
all of these conditions have the same sort of appearance and um, the slowness of movement, the rigidity of movement, and in many cases, arresting tremor. And we are learning more and more about the condition every single day and new treatments are being developed for these specific forms of Parkinson's. And um, it's never a good time to have Parkinson's, but in the last 20 years, the last 20 years has been the most exciting time for Parkinson's research and we've got high hopes for the future. You can help us keep making this content by simply subscribing to the channel. And remember, there's a new video every week.